everybody, and thank you for joining us for the CSO Annual Meeting. My name is Scott Spaulding. I'm the Park Manager at Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Historic State Park. For the meeting today, we've invited a special guest speaker, Ron Hasse. Some of you may know Ron. Ron is Professor Emeritus at the University of Florida, where he taught design and historic preservation. Ron is a specialist in the area of Florida vernacular architecture, and also the author of the book, Classic Cracker. Thank you for joining us today, Ron. Hi, Scott. I'm happy to be here. It's a lovely day. Pleased to be out at the Marjorie Rowling's homestead. I see this old sign here in this gate. They really are lovely. Could we go over and read that sign together? Absolutely. It is necessary to leave the impersonal highway, to step inside the rusty gate and close it behind. One is now inside the orange grove, out of one world and in the mysterious heart of another. And after long years of spiritual homelessness, of nostalgia, here is that mystic loveliness of childhood again. Here is home. That's nice, Ron. Should we put on our masks and walk up to the barn? Here we are at Marjorie's Farmstead, and which leads to my first question. What is vernacular architecture, and how did you get interested in something like that? <laughs> vernacular, yeah. Yeah, I, I love the word itself, Scott. The word vernacular, uh, if you look it up in uh, Webster, you'd probably find something like this. Uh, the language or dialect of a particular region or place. Okay. The language or dialect of a particular region or place. So uh, linguistically, we might think of that in sounds we hear like an Irish brogue or something like that. Sure. But visually or architecturally, vernacular for me conjures up houses up off the ground, lots of porches, a kind of breezy open pavilion, if you will. Sure. Uh, so that's, that's our vernacular, okay. right here in our region of uh, North Florida. And Marjorie does such a great job in conjuring up for those of us who read her books, uh, that image of people and places that have a wonderful vernacular connection to, uh, to North Florida. I, I like to start uh, chapters in my book with quotes from her to kind of set the pace. She does such an excellent job of that for me. That's wonderful. Can I read one of those? Absolutely. Yeah, this is uh, uh, something here with a, with, a, with a picture of an old uh, home, an old fallen down uh, cracker house. And, and what, she, what Marjorie writes from Cross Creek is this. Old Joe lived alone in the old Mackey house. The house is as silver gray as the speckled perch he sometimes catches. <laughs> it is a tall box of a house and even in its desertion maintains a lot of sturdy livability. It was a good house in its day. Something about it is beautiful. It's color, most of all, and tall palms bend over it and there are live oaks and holly and a few orange trees around it and the hammock is a soft curtain beyond it. Great, wonderful. great way to start a chapter it is, of my absolutely. book. Absolutely, <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, should we move on to the barn? Okay. All right. And of course, you've been on our tours before, so you know that they begin at the old barn. Of course, it's not that old, and I think you know something about that. When I was going through our files a few months ago, I found some drawings that had your name on it, Recap. December of 1987, and lo and behold. There's the front of the barn, yeah. built up in the west elevation. Excellent. Yeah. So these are my student drawings. Yes. I, of course, as the responsible party, had to put my name on it. Sure. And I'm embarrassed to say I don't see any of their names. Maybe they're hidden away. They probably are hidden on the back page. Yep. <laughs> But this is this is excellent work, architectural research. But yeah, it sounds like that. they put a lot of thought into this barn, and of course used a lot of the locals around to find out exactly where it was and what yeah. it was, and yeah. that's great. 
After Marjorie's death, the University of Florida acquired her property, and they tore down the barn that was here. I think they were concerned about liability or something like that. Sure. So the barn was gone. Uh, uh, then the state took over the property, and they wanted to rebuild the barn, make it a part of the homestead here, a sure. very important part of it. Uh, so uh, anthropology from the university came out here, and they did some interesting things. They did a compression test here. They set off little charges uh, near the earth, and, and, it, and it, it lets them know various densities of the earth around here. So they could say, oh, a post was here, a post was here, here there was a foundation wall. And they get a map, more or less, a ground plane map of the old barn. Okay. Very then my students, my, I had a group of graduate students who were interested in uh, conjuring up what the barn looked like. So my, my students uh, talked to anybody, everybody who knew Marjorie or knew the old barn. Uh, people like Snow Slater. Sure. I, I forget what Snow's connection was with Marjorie. Well, longtime friends of Marjorie. Uh, Mar at one time, he was Marjorie's growth manager, but they, they helped okay. each other significantly, one and the other. So okay. she writes about Snow, of course, in Cross Creek. And J.T. Glisson was another person. Sure, a longtime friend. To. Yep, just a boy when, when uh, he met Marjorie. Yeah, yeah. and he appears in, in a number of her writings, I know. Uh, so uh, these people uh, helped. Uh, my students reinterpret the old barn to get the drawings that were very close to what the old barn used to be. And then the state uh, built it. They got uh, builders and people to help them develop it, and, and here it is. Yeah, I, I understand that the, uh, there was a donation involved to get materials, and a lot of folks, uh, park staff and others, donated time to actually construct the barn based on the rendering that your students did, and of course the architect from the state that they designed the building, yeah. uh, maybe a little bit beefier than what oh, you yeah. had yeah. Uh, in your original drawings. <laughs> it is. But it, that was to meet current code and also because we'd have visitors underneath here at different times. Absolutely understandable. But the old barn, the old citrus grove barns like this were very delicate, mm -hmm. simple, hand-built sure. uh, uh, barns. They and, served uh, their purpose. Yep. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're quite uh, interesting. And, right. and so this one is uh, a little bit more like a, like a New England brace frame barn, but it, it has to be that way. Absolutely. Well, uh, why don't we continue on up to the house? Okay. All right. I'm with you. This old farmhouse and all its quirkiness has always fascinated me. You know, Marjorie referred to it as her shabby farmhouse. <laughs> but you know that all the buildings were here when Marjorie arrived here with her husband Charles in 1928. But Marjorie uh, was credited for tying the pieces together. So the bathroom, which is the center section, tied together the bedroom wing of the house and the main house. And on the other side, uh, a dog trot was t tied together the dining room and the kitchen to the main house. Uh, very interesting in how it all came together. Uh, is this type of construction uh, something that was commonly used back then, adding on to a building or a structure? Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, very common. I mean, the basic construction of these buildings is uh, quite typical of that era. Houses up off the ground on wooden uh, piers or stone piers or whatever uh, people had available to them. More often than not, uh, cypress uh, wedges uh, or, or heart, heart pine wedges uh, would be used. Uh, and a wood platform, uh, wood shingles, wood hand-rived shingles such as we see here. Uh, so it's, it's very typical. Uh, and, and then the drawing of things together is something that happened quite commonly over the years. But, but, the, but the complex here is unique also. It is. It's not just common. I mean, right. the, the bedroom wing is, is a wonderful uh, piece of architecture, but it's ver not very common. I think it was an old tenant house. Yes, from what we've been told, it was a, um, 
a tenant house nearby that was brought here around 1925. They say that it was rolled in place with logs <laughs> and mules, drug it in, and set it up to be part of the, the farmstead. Uh, this is well before Marjorie arrived. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then she converted into bedrooms for herself and for her guests. Yes. And to have a porch, we have as we see the porch on this side, there's another one on the other side. That's extremely unique. Okay. But it's absolutely wonderful and delightful that she, she had these kinds of spaces to draw together and make her home. Absolutely. Wonderful it's to really visit. Neat. Yep. That's what's special about the house. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ron, you have a remarkable sketch of this old house in your book. Uh, whereabouts did you take that rendering? Where oh, were you at? Yeah. Uh, well, we're here. Uh, let me see if we can find that. Yes. Uh, I was standing right here, Scott when I did that pen and ink drawing yes. that you're referring to. That's right. Okay. Uh, it showed the, the tenant house or her bedroom wing. Uh, it showed the porch where Marjorie uh, did a lot of her uh, writing of her manuscript and the palm trees coming up overhead. I really liked that drawing. It was one of my best. Uh, the, the friends of Marjorie's farm have a copy of that. They use it in their uh, newsletter and other things. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm always proud to see it okay, when it comes yeah. in my mail. And I've seen that then. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. Earlier you had mentioned a term and you refer to it in your book, open breezy pavilions. Um, why don't we walk over to the house and you can kind of explain okay. that concept and also what, if any, this house uh, effect it had on your design and architecture. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, great subject. Yeah, I'll do that. So, uh, open breezy pavilions. It's, for me, it's the ideal house in Florida. It's some place where it's, you've got shade and you've got air movement. They are the two critical things to make one comfortable in our uh, hot and humid climate. Sure. If you have those things, you can pretty well survive it. And Marjorie saw to it that she had those things here, okay. shade and air movement. So uh, that is something that's common in the, uh, the architecture, vernacular architecture, is open, breezy, lots of air movement. Yes, uh, in, the, air in the best of it, yeah. in the best of it. Sure. And it certainly was uh, a goal that uh, I had myself in my own architectural okay. work. I was going to ask what influence that had on your, your architecture. Yeah, well Marjorie, uh, her home here, her writings were extremely influential on me on my teaching, on my research, on my architecture. Uh, Marjorie was, uh, was, was a guide, guide to all of those things for me. Uh, we, we moved here from New Hampshire, my wife and I and her kids, uh, to Florida. And when we did that, I was very excited about coming to a new place, a new, sure. new, a new environment, new friends, new, wor new work. So I, 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 we tried to get our kids interested in it too. We read a lot of Marjorie Rawlings when we were still living up in New Hampshire. Okay. And while we traveled south in a, in a U-Haul trailer, uh, we took turns reading from the yearling. I, I guess I was hoping that uh, my kids would pick up from Jody, you know? Sure. And have that curiosity about the backwoods and right. want to be a little bit like that in, yeah. in their new home. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, architecturally for me, uh, after I wrote Classic Cracker, I, I got a lot of people interested in the idea of living in one of these houses again. So they'd call me up and say, could you design a home for me that has those old Florida qualities, but of course has all the modern convenience that, sure. that, that we're, uh, we're accustomed to. So, so that's how my, uh, my work uh, evolved. There's, a, there's a, an example of the kind of architecture I'm talking about that that res responded to Marjorie and to the things that I wrote about in my book. There's a thing called a single pen house, yeah. goes to dog trot, goes to eye houses, goes to four square Georgian. That's a kind of a typological summary of, of, of what my book does. But I, I had an opportunity to design a small house for two people on Cross Creek, right at the bridge that yes. goes, goes over 325. Yes. Do you? I've seen it. Yeah. That's a house that I designed. Okay. And. Um, uh, Kate Barnes actually did a wonderful painting of that house. Oh, wow. uh, we should ha have our uh, viewers uh, get to look at that. Sure. Perhaps we can arrange that. I bet we can. Why don't we go inside the old house and get a closer look at this breezy pavilion concept? All right. Let's do that. There you go. Watch your step. We always tell people to watch their step. <laughs> Oh, 
So Ron, as we discussed, the porch wasn't here when Marjorie came in. Our friend Mo built the porch and it became a wonderful place for Marjorie. This is where the majority of her writing took place, right on this table that was put together by her husband, Charles. Oh, so uh, great. Special magic happened here and it still does every time visitors come in to be able to see where the creation of all those wonderful works took place. Why don't we move inside the house? Okay. Here we are into the main house. This, this structure, they say, was put together around 1884 and was the, the first structure that came in here. Remarkable how tall these ceilings are. Is that typical of uh, vernacular construction? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, very common, uh, Scott. Uh, when I was writing my book, I traveled all over North Florida, taking pictures and visiting old houses like this, sure. talking to people, some people still living in them, others who knew all about it. Uh, and they were magnificent spaces. Tall ceilings, of course, you want to get the air moving up and out where you are, you know. She does a good job of that. Marjorie does a good job. Look how this house is open, Scott. Yes. It's, it's truly an open, breezy pavilion today. I can feel the air movement as we stand here, sure. in fact. Sure. Uh, so uh, as I travel about, a, a couple of good examples that I might mention up in, per, up in Perry, uh, the Forestry Museum there, the old Widden, uh, Widden cabin. Yes. It's a delightful there. dog trot. Yep. You go into those rooms, you've seen these. Uh, the, the rooms there are like 14 by 14 and almost as high as that. They're just wonderful, beautiful spaces to look at. I love to go there with my students and just marvel at the, at the uh, clarity of form that uh, such people could build, you know, when they're just building what their father told them to build, right, you know, and what they'd right. observe. There was no cerebral uh, input into that. It's just a matter of craft, you know, That's what right. you know, what you know how to do. Another great place to go and see this sort of thing, maybe even closer to it, is down in Bradenton, the Stevens cabin there. Okay. It was built in 1920. Oh. That's well after we'd think of old Cracker homesteads. I went down there a couple of months ago for the centennial of the Stevenson uh, dog trot there. Beautiful, beautiful house. I gave a talk there about Cracker architecture. It was a nice event for me. Uh, and, and so you see this. Yes, you do see this. This is quite common, the high ceilings and, 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 and the way the breezy open pavilion really works. Sure. Marjorie did a few changes here with a friend of her, uh, with the help of her friend Mo. Of course, these French doors weren't always here. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, at one point, Marjorie was leaning up against the wall. She writes about this in her book, and the wall shook, and she got him to open up some of the old boards, and there was full of termites. So uh -oh. he said, Marjorie, it's a wonder that whole wall didn't fall down on you. So when he rebuilt it, she went out and got these French doors. She loved to have the light of the grove fill the house, and that's what helped. Of course, you know, lights weren't always here. You know, for many years, it was just candlelight and uh, oil lamps. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, and she invented these lamps, didn't she? Well, yeah, the very, very crude, I guess. Just wires coming in with a bulb at the end. Uh, she painted mixing bowls to make the shades for them. And, and they're I like still it. Here today. I could use some of those in my house. Yeah. Perfect indirect lighting. There you go. Now, over in the corner here, uh, it's funny, Marjorie said that the uh, firewood is kept by the fire water. And, uh, that was her, uh, well known to be her liquor cabinet. Uh, prior to that, it was use was probably more of a pantry. Of course, they back then, uh, back in the day when this cabin was built, the the fireplace was used as a hearth, but also a place to cook over. Yeah, it was a simple right, very simple means. It was two rooms, I guess. But yes, we think that this was a divider for yeah. the two room cabin. So it had a sleeping room and a living, cooking, yes. eating room. Sort of like a uh, house on the prairie style, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But okay. let's move on through. Watch your step coming through the threshold. Okay. We're, going, we're inside that connection that we were looking at from the outside. This is the, uh, the, the connection, the main house, and uh, the bedroom wing. So this is a very important piece. Now, bathrooms other than outhouses uh, back in the day weren't very common, were they? Uh, <laughs> So this is definitely something that was added that Marjorie, she writes about it in Evolution of Comfort. 
um, yeah. you know, having to use the outhouse for so many years. And coming from a place like Rochester, New York, she would want to have some of the indoor comforts of home. <laughs> so you bet. Uh, you bet. she she took some of the proceeds left over from the the, the short story, the long short story she wrote, Jacob Slatter, Jacob and uh, she got some of the uh, fixtures and appliances and had Mo bring in uh, the bathroom, put in this constructed the room. Now, are add-ons add like this typical as people take uh, the old structures and kind of modernize yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Add-ons, fill-ins, the okay. way she's doing here. Sure. Very, very common, the evolution of the old Cracker House from one simple uh, configuration of forms to a more complex one. Uh, an old uncle comes to live with you or something, you sure. gotta you fill in the porch to make a bedroom for him. Right. Or you're lucky enough to get indoor plumbing as Marjorie did. Uh, and Marjorie lived that role uh, right along. And, and excuse me for saying so, but she milks this this bathroom <laughs> excellently as a writer. Sure. She makes a big deal out of yes. it. Yes. And yeah. it's always fun she to read. She had a party here you know, they, uh, when they had the grand opening. <laughs> filled the, the tub with some ice and had a tray of glasses and, and uh, had some <laughs> champagne and soda and of course uh, had roses in the in the, in the, or in the uh, <laughs> WC there. <laughs> right, right. She was she was great at that. Yeah so add-ons, fill-ins like this. Uh, uh, the kitchen of her house is connected. Kitchens were always out back initially to get the fire. The kitchens were hot places continuously. Always something going on in there. So, so it was always separated from the old cracker homes. Sure. Uh, now, Marjorie connected hers and she connected a bedroom wing to the main house. This is very typical. I think a lot of this, this is a conjecture on my part. I think a lot of this happened when metal roofs became popular. Okay. And the, and the hazard of sparks from a chimney starting a wood roof on fire were relaxed a bit. Okay. And people said, well, let's connect our kitchen now. Let's okay. not go through open space out to it. Let's close in the dog trot. Okay. Let's connect uh, the, the bedroom area. Uh, with a hallway, or in this case, a more importantly uh, uh, facilitated uh, bathroom. So this is very, very common. Uh, well, it's interesting you should say that about the metal roof, because when Marjorie arrived here, it had a metal roof, albeit it was old and leaking, and oh. eventually, as money was gotten, she put on the shake, so kind oh, of did that I didn't in, know that. in she, reverse. She <laughs> did it in reverse. Very interesting, yeah. Right. Most of these old houses you see now with metal roofs. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah, yeah. Adds that extra protection that you're talking about. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we've got to go see Marjorie's bedroom, and so let's okay. walk through the bathroom into the bedroom wing, but... Um, uh, one thing I must warn you of, when uh, Marjorie put, had Mo put this uh, connection in, they soon discovered that the, the buildings were not level with one another. So <laughs> yeah, I see put it in the floor level, it created this awful step Marjorie writes about in Evolution of Comfort. And she says that it's no friend to the aged, the absent-minded, or the inebriated. So we'll be careful as we walk through All here. right, yeah. Well, we got two out of three on that. Yes. I mentioned earlier uh, that the uh, quirkiness of this house always intrigued me and part of that is the fact that um, this is the bedroom wing. We're now in the guest uh, bedroom of that bedroom wing but in order for Marjorie to get into her bedroom she would have to go outside to come back in oh, because yeah. even though it looks like there's a connection here between <laughs> the two rooms, that's just a closet. Yeah. So well, if Robert Frost is sleeping here, Marjorie's not going to go traipsing back That's true, forth. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we go outside and okay. come back in? All right. right. <laughs> this is not part of the tour, I guess. Nope. <laughs> Marjorie's room. Well, it is. This it is, is the, okay. sort of the midway point of the tour. Okay. Come into Marjorie's room. All right, yes, indeed. And of course, we always, we can peek outside here, Ron, at the outhouse that uh, Marjorie writes about in Evolution and Comfort. If you peek right outside the door here, <laughs> uh, you can see it, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, I love that. No. Same type of, uh, of construction in here, these very tall, uh, ceilings and of course Marjorie had lights brought in her room that's her original four poster bed and yeah. the last improvement she made to her house as you talked about add-ons were kind of common back then 
was her bathroom. Her own bathroom. Yes, and so once that was constructed, she said, now if I want to sleep in and take breakfast in bed and be lazy <laughs> a little bit, I can do that. Uh, I've, I've got all the comforts of home in my, my little apartment. Uh, she did like to write in that bed, I yes. think, uh, as, a, as, as the day started and then out to the right. porch to continue her work. Uh, yeah. Well, this is uh, very unique, very unique. It's not common to any cracker house I've explored, and I've seen practically everything yeah. from Pensacola to, to uh, Key West. Uh, well, so, uh, it was unique like Marjorie was unique, right? There you go, there you go. It, it suits her very well. This, this, this wing is just exceptional and quite unique. All right, well, let's step back out. We'll come right in through the side porch here, Ron. Okay. Yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a part of the open breezy pavilion here. The way she connected this, just as a kind of a dog trot, as you recall. Yes. It lets the air move through. Pretty darn nice. Yes. Why don't we cut through the dining room? Uh, this was said to be the only room in the house with a finished floor. Of course, Marjorie was an entertainer and she loved to have guests come in for, yeah. for dinner. So uh -huh. let's sneak through here. All right, I love this dining room. Yeah. Very, very comfortable. And she would sit here. So yes. So that nobody had to look at the, the outhouse. That's right. <laughs> the ceilings in this room are a little bit lower. Uh, yeah, this is a different construction. Pulled. Well, not pulled, but connected to the main house. Yeah. Uh, and with a different floor, as you're pointing out. Yes. Uh, even here, kind of In the first few pages uh, of the yearling, she talks about the uh, corn house scrub that uh, we've got in the corner over okay. there. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, scrub that floor. <laughs> but, so, like you, you mentioned before, Ron, kitchens, uh, places where there was a lot of intense heat and even sometimes open flame were kept as far away from the main house yes. as possible. Yes, that's, that's what was going on here. Yes. Uh, I love this kitchen. You know, when I see old kitchens like this, I try to talk my clients into, why don't you do a simple kitchen? You need 400 <laughs> feet of formica or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you get a stove, you got a table, you got a sink. What more do you a need? A right? place where you can roll out cookies, a place to cook, you know. You can sit here, your kids are with you, it's fun. How no. many of you have taken you up on that? Nobody. Nobody has. <laughs> well, that figures. But but anyway. They want the full kitchen. That's you the whole it. idea of a new house. That's right. A great bathroom, a great kitchen. Make it cracker style. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ron, why don't we have a seat on this old firewood box that Charles built? Do you uh, mind doing that? It'll hold yeah. us, won't it? Yeah, I think it will hold us. It's held up a lot during the years. All uh, right. So, cool. Ron, it's been a pleasure having you out here today. Thank and I know Scott. our, our uh, audience has probably uh, enjoyed it very much as well. So, um, in closing, is there anything you'd like to add about your experience or anything at all? Just yeah, well, I'd just like to re-emphasize, if I may, the influence of Marjorie Canan Rowling on us all. Yeah. Those of us who've read her books, those of us who enjoyed learning of her life and through her of the life of early Florida settlers. It's, uh, it's, it's just been uh, uh, remarkable. Uh, it led me to read, to write my book, Classic Cracker, uh, and, uh, and that led to a, a fairly successful uh, career as an architect, thinking cracker. Mr. Cracker, whatever. Uh, it was a, a great, uh, a great life that she helped me with. May I read a little bit from my book? I would Scott? love you to. Yes. The, the closing uh, paragraph or two is uh, is has always been kind of heartfelt to me, and it might uh, capture some of the things we've been talking about today. There's one final recommendation with which I would like to end these pages. It is to suggest that each of us, from time to time, step outside our increasingly thermos bottle-like air-conditioned offices and homes and drive the back roads of North Florida, 
to McClenny or Brooker on State Road 231, or to Little Lloyd's just off Interstate I-10 east of Tallahassee. Drive out along US-27 north of Mayo, and with your camera or your mind's eye, study the beauty that you will find there in the form of gently sagging roofs and decomposing verandas that make up the last of our Cracker Florida heritage. It will all soon be gone. It's sad, but it's true. But it's but, true. Yep. It's, it's an era that's coming to a, to a close. But it's a good reminder that we need to be cognizant and be on the lookout for some of these old structures that are still there, right? I think and this we, one, of course, will be preserved for all time. Uh, fantastic. With the Florida Park what, Service. What the state of Florida and its Park Service have done here, this is just fantastic. We'll all enjoy it for a long, long time. All right. Well, Ron, we've been wearing our masks because we need to social distance. Why don't we go outside and, and unmask at a safe distance so visitors can actually see what we really look like? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> what an idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ron, let's take our masks off. Huh? All right. And on behalf of the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, the Florida Park Service, and the Friends of Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Farm, we thank you for being here today. Thank you, Scott. All right. My pleasure. You take care and come back and see us soon. You betcha. All right.